What's up, guys? Welcome back. For some more glorious, mate. And this is a request I recently got to do a video on who I think is the three most powerful gods in the game and how I would nerf them and the three weakest gods in the game and how I'd buff them. So I'm going to split this into two videos and we'll do the most powerful tonight and then the weakest tomorrow. So I think the first thing I want to cover is I'm more so looking at their kit and what their kit does rather than if someone just does shit tons of damage because it's easy to change the numbers of someone that does a shit ton of damage whereas when you have someone that does something that is just stupidly OP that's harder to change and that's really what, I've, really what I want to focus on to be honest I want to focus more on someone who's got a kit that does something that I find is OP and how we can really weaken them without completely gutting them and changing the kit so obviously you're probably going to disagree with me here so I just want to make that clear, that's what I'm intending to do here. So we're going to first look at some gods that didn't make it. This may surprise you. We have Kukulun, the Morrigan, and Raijin. These are all very powerful gods. But Kukulun will have a lot of abilities that do a lot of damage. You could compare him sort of to tier. See, maybe he's a slightly stronger tier. But he doesn't have the heal and the sustainability of tier. However, he sort of does Threatimization, which is... Gladiator Shield and possibly Stone of Gaia. However, I would say they're neither of them are as good as a tier heal. However, the fact remains that with those items, he is essentially a better tier. But it's not really his kit that's making him OP in that regard. It's the fact that he can use certain items to make himself OP. So I don't consider him to be truly OP. Even though, again, he is very powerful, he is very strong. The double ultimate, short CDs, special on the setting ultimate, double CC immunity, double escape. Like, he is very good. He is essentially a better tier, minus a heal. But that doesn't make him truly OP or truly wrong in my opinion. Next up we've got Raijin, whose kit is good, very very good, but again not inherently broken. He's got a very good escape, and he can sell self for his ultimate with a very potent slow, and his ult is very forgiving. But that again, is just really good. It's not OP, it's just really good. The only reason he's truly OP is because they've been messing with his numbers, they've been high res. And that's pushing him over the edge in combination with having a very good kit. You've got a very good kit, then you give it very good numbers on top of that, and then you have someone approaching broken. But again, that's not really the kit. And then Morrigan. Morrigan is probably the closest one here to being truly broken. Her ultimate can allow her to become anyone, meaning she can abuse the fact that they could be a very potent god enemy team, which allows her to build multiple different ways. She can build full CDR, sort of kind of bruiser ish, and then just change into an enemy or a teammate for a maximum DPS and her kit is also quite quite strong in its own right she's got the stealth which is very strong she's got a stun on her basic abilities which again is quite strong but high res have thought about this she has to be close range for those things and she doesn't have an I fuck you up ultimate she needs to use her ultimate to become someone else to do that and they also thought about that and made her ult longer CDs than most other people's ults so again well she's close high res actually thought about it for once holy shit and therefore she's just very very good if the ult was in a shorter series she would be pushing closer to the broken kind of area but that's just not the case and there's another three gods again we're close but not quite there it's probably weird to see Chak there the reason I include Chak is because when you actually think about what his kit does especially in its new bar form it's actually a very very strong kit he's got good base damage on his first ability which is long range his setting ability gives him protection, which is again good base damage, and it's a teleport, which makes it a pretty good escape if need be. His 3 is a very strong self heal, which also slows movement speeds of the enemies, allowing me, you know, trade and box away if he so desires. And it also now reduces their attack speed, which makes his box ability even better. Like, he can just fight people so well now. And then his ultimate is actually a very, 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 very fucking big circle with CC immune, reduced damage on it and it knocks up and silences everyone it is a really good ultimate, it's a kit actually, all in, it's actually really strong if high res messed about with his numbers and made all the CDs too short, he would be broken just because his kit is inherently that good you don't think of it as being that good but it is, he has everything it's just the fact that he doesn't really excel in anything, he just has everything but He's pretty high ranked in everything, in my opinion. Like, he's not sitting at 5 out of 10s across the board. He's sitting at 6 and 7s across the board. 
And if they push their numbers up and he could rotate those abilities all the faster, he'd be even higher up. I think a lot of people are sitting in check. And then we've got Uller. Uller, again, is just someone whose kit isn't inherently broken. It's a very good kit. He's got the quick, easy stun. He's got this kind of burst DPS combo. But he doesn't have CC immunity's kit. He doesn't have a big fuck you up ult. He just has a strong kit. The only reason he's good right now is because, again, higher is fucked with the numbers. And Hunter's got left only farm up, so his numbers are fucking bigger faster. So again, that's not really his kit, that's just high res fucked up. And then Kepri, Kepri has an ultimate that, in my opinion, breaks the game. However, it's not immune to executes, which gives it a sort of ability to be played around. And the duration that's left on it, you know, it's not like there's just this thing floating on you forever, it runs out, and the duration isn't that long. So, again, there's limitations to it, and he's not a great initiator for a support or a tank. Therefore, you know, again, there's limitations to the brokenness of it. You know, it's not quite pushing full on broken, it's just really, really strong, really, really frustrating ability. But it's not quite broken. So those are the gods that didn't quite make it. In fourth place, as a runner-up to the top three, we had Geb, but he didn't quite make it either, because I don't think he's quite as strong as the other gods. And now you all get to play a game. Guess the top three. And at number three, we have Ario, the bear bitch. And don't let her appearance fool you. I know we all, or at least me, would love to go frolicking in the wheat fields with her, but no. Hyra is fucked up on this. They made a tank, a stand switcher, and she's got so much fucking CC, it's insane. She's got so much mobility, it's insane. And she heals. Yes, she does a lot of damage, but you can change that. If you don't want to change her kit, then she's always going to have lots of CC, lots of mobility, and lots of healing, which makes her feel fucking invulnerable, and it makes you feel like you can't escape. Her early game is especially insane. Which is one of the reasons why she's so strong in the solo lane. Because you and your jungler can just get so fucking aggressive. Or even in the duel lane, you and your hunter can just get so fucking aggressive. Or in the jungle, because you and your solo can just get so aggressive. You've just got so much potential DPS on her early game, and it never really falls off. And you can die for days, you can chase people down for days, and they pretty much can't escape you. Because again, you get so much CC. So the problems with her are obvious, she's got so much fucking CC. So much fucking chase down potential and so much healing. And then you have damage on top of that because why not? Or maybe she doesn't have damage but it feels like she does because she has so much fucking abilities notations. So if you don't want to change your kit too much but you want to at least limit her, then the way I would nerf her is either A, look at the cooldowns, B, look at the mana costs because if the mana costs are higher it's hard to just spam your abilities, rotate and spam your abilities. It kind of would make her need to buy an MP5 item, particularly early game, maybe going to Genji's guard or something. Which is actually a good item and all the more so on a tank. However, the fact that she would need to be thinking about an MP5 item, the fact that she would need to think about how to best use her abilities rather than just fucking rolling her face on the keyboard and spamming everything because why not? Because you're OP bear bitch and you've got fucking abilities for days. You want some way to make her think. So that's kind of how I would do it. If you don't want to change your kit, aka get rid of the CC or the healing, you would just look at the numbers that make those things possible, which is cooldowns and mana usage. So that's kind of how I would therefore, I think. If you've got longer cooldowns or higher mana costs, she has to think a bit more, and that's always a positive, in my opinion. In number two, we have Ao motherfucking Kwong. I fucking hate this slut bag of a god. However, I also really enjoy playing him because he is really OP and sometimes I forget who, you know, I think people forget just how OP this god is. So I play him just for the satisfaction of absolutely ripping people apart. You know, when I've really just had, when I've really just had a bit of a bad day and I really just want to rip people apart. In fact, that happened recently in Ranked. It was one of those nights, two people on my team DC'd, fair enough, next game. Some of my team DC'd, fair enough, next game. I've got Apache ADC, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fuck you match mating, I'm going to take victory in my own hands, into the lockout Kwong. That, that's what you do when you're pissed off, and you want to win, and I wanted to win. So what into the lockout Al Kwong, and then I did Al Kwong things, and I killed everyone, it was basically unkillable for the most part, and dealt shit tons of damage while taking shit tons of damage and just spam taunting everyone because it was easy peasy because Al Kwong is fucking OP. Why is he OP? He has the best type of escape in the game. A teleport. His is also stealthed. And it also leaves damage behind rather than leaving the damage 
inwards, what I mean by that. Instead of you having to jump into the fight to deal the damage, you actually leave the damage behind you, meaning you can deal damage as you run away, which is actually better in my opinion. And then it's stealthed as well, because, you know, why not? Why not? Why, why not give a very, very potent, very, very powerful assassin mage with good base stats a stealth teleport that deals damage behind them instead of having to force them into a fight to engage with it? You know, you know that, that, make, that makes sense. That makes sense, right? And then, again, we don't want to talk too much about numbers because they can be tweaked. However, his two, his second ability, is one of the highest base of damage abilities in the game. It's just that fucking strong. And then his ultimate, his ultimate is the thing that pisses me off the most. It's CC immune. So he's got that in his kit as well. And he does have CC. He's got a slow on his two and his ult as he's obviously CC as well. So he's got a CC immunity. He's got a CC. He's got the slow. He's got the perfect, perfect disengage. He's got the damage numbers. But the ult pisses me off the most. Because the ult is an execute that takes him out of the fight. I mean, he doesn't have to risk going in for an execute like the other couple of execute gods, uh, Toast and Loki. They actually have to engage for their executes. I know Loki isn't a real execute, but it may as well be. They actually have to engage for it. He gets to escape with his. And yes, theirs does cause damage, but the Toast can, you know, unless he has more people, he can only deal damage or execute. Alquan executes on the way up and then can go back down and deal damage. And he also heals off his execute as well. And he gets the entire version of the map, which I think is very, very potent and very, very powerful. Why the fuck does it do so much? Who thought this was okay? Who thought this was a good fucking idea? And they went and changed him and gave him fucking lifesteal butt on his kit as well, because th that that is just what he needed. He needed more healing in his kit. So he actually has two forms of healing now. He's got his passive lifesteal, which isn't super strong, but it's still a heal. He's got his ult heal. He's all CC immune. It gets him completely clean out the fight. He's got ridiculous base damage and he's got the cleanest, safest escape in the game with stealth, which is still incredible in this game. Wow. What a fucking god. The only real way to change, in my opinion, again, would be like Artyo. Without completely gutting his kit, you would have to, in my opinion, I think you should increase the cooldown on the ultimate. I think it should be at least 110 seconds. I think it is that strong that it should be that lengthy. I mean, you'd be forced into CDR. And at least it would take a couple of items before he got online, which I think is fine, because again, he's still a very powerful god. You could still beat beads on 110 seconds, so that's still perfectly reasonable. And again, you'd have to go into certain items. Maybe you don't need to go straight up to 110 seconds, maybe you experiment, maybe 105, 102. It doesn't have to end in a fucking zero or a five. And you try and find this, you know, a sweet spot. As long as it can beat beads, that way, you know, you he still got a potential to kill you at some point, which he should have. But at the same time, so it isn't just so fucking blatantly fucking stupid. I should also add, his ult can actually damage you without executing you. You can just throw them up and they land back down. So it does still deal the damage and it still does provide him with the CC immunity. However, he doesn't get the escape like that. But let's be honest, that's a very, very rare case. So, yeah, that's kind of how I would change him. You could look at his mana cost, but I don't think that would be enough. And they need to be extensively raised, and again, I just don't think it's enough. So we're going to move on to number one now. And there's no fucking surprises. I think we all know who she is. That's right. It's Sir Cunt. This god has pissed me off since her release. She has the damage, because her abilities can crit. She has the mobility, because she has four real... She has four escapes. Let's be honest, every one of her abilities is an escape because they all create distance. She's got the dash, she's got a leap, which is a stealth, which means she can hide, and some smart players will hide at a corner point if they suspect someone, you know, might accidentally come around the corner on their own, boom, insta gibbed. But her ult actually can push an enemy in a certain direction, therefore, if she's being chased, she can ult someone, push them away, therefore creating space. While she herself has not leaped away, she has essentially forced the enemy to leap in the opposite direction from her. So it is, in essence, an escape. And then her taunt, if there's an enemy nearby chasing with the other enemy and you taunt them, then they will get mad this and go towards their enemies, therefore creating distance and space. So she actually has four ways to escape. 
Then she's got the hard CC again in the second ability and in her ultimate, which again forces you into a certain direction. So again, that's she's got the hard CC, she's got mobility for days, she's got damage for days, and then her passive, if you apply the poison or the venom or whatever it is, she gets bonus percentage based damage. Holy fucking shit. And we're still not done yet. She's got 100% anti-heal and they change 100% to actually mean you get jack shit. If you get heal boosts, doesn't do nothing. You have no healing. And not only that, oh no no, we're not done. They decide to make her ultimate, which is CC immune, and it's got some fucking insane invincible frames on it. In fucking insane. I swear I've seen her fucking warp for an ability that was already hitting her hitbox and she just was immune to it. It's fucking stupid. It's true damage. That means there is no defense against it. It will do the number it states it will do. Your maximum defense, 325 physical, it means nothing. Nothing. Oh, but wait, we're not done. Because you're going to think, ah, but what about Aegis? High res beat you to that. They made it so her damage was slower and more paced out. Therefore, you can Aegis it. That's why she's number one above Al Kuang. Because I can beat Al Kuang out. High res changed it so I can't fucking Aegis her out. Thanks, high res. Go fuck yourselves. So, yeah, Sir Kit, or Sir Cunt, let's be honest, it's Sir Cunt, she can go fuck herself with her stupid fucking poisonous or venomous or whatever the fuck it is tail, because fuck her. She has everything, everything in her kit. She has everything. She lacks nothing. What I would do immediately is change her ultimate. Again, we're gonna we're not going to change the kit, we're going to keep it as it is. Like, if they want to be 100% anti-heal, true damage, fine. We're not going to change the numbers either. We're going to make the damage pulse quicker. Therefore, you can actually counter it with an Aegis. Holy shit. We're making it so she can be counter people. I know. What? A counter to the god that has no counter? And before you say HP, you counter the true damage. Remember, her passive is percentage based damage. So that doesn't do jack shit. It doesn't cut it. She is uncounterable. So, yes. The damage will pulse faster. That way, you can actually Aegis that shit. That's the first and immediate change I would make. I think that's the most important one. I also feel like we could make her poison either harder to apply or slightly, slightly easier to apply but reduce the percentage damage heavily. Therefore it's free bonus damage but not insane bonus damage, probably similar to Bestet rather than just being absurd as it currently is because we've all seen what it's like, she jumps on you or she blinks on you or whatever, she hits you with that stupid fucking taunt and then she fucking zigzags through you and scales you and your poison, your HP just fucking plummets out of nowhere. She probably crit you as she was jumping through you as well. In fact, she may not have because she may have built the fucking superior tanky build and just be fucking abusing all her free damage because that always made the most sense. So, yeah, Sir Kit has a lot of problems. Her kit, it, it just it inherently has no counter and that pisses me off that I can't counter build her kit. High res have said no. So if I was in charge, if I could change it, I would say yes. Because counter building I think is core to a game. You should be able to counter build certain gods, and you can't. She's too hard to catch. You know, there's rules in smite. You don't chase the Yanis, you don't chase the Sircunt. And yet she's got all this damage on top of that insane mobility. They did try to address her mobility by making her base movement speed slightly slower, which was smart. So if they can now just address the ultimate by making it pulse faster. And keep in mind, another bonus on this out. If you die near someone, or a minion, with this ult, it spreads to all of them, and if they die, that spreads as well. Fucking yes. So, yeah, her ultimate should pulse quicker. That way, you can potentially Aegis it. Another p possibility to look at would be increasing the cooldowns on her escapes, making her harder, no, sorry, making her easier to catch. That makes a lot of sense to me as well, which means we kind of force her into CDR, even though she's going to CDR anyway, but at least you know, it, it makes it so you can potentially catch a Sir Cunt. I probably still would never try, but it brings a glimmer of hope, and sometimes that's enough. So that is my top three most powerful gods in the game, and how I'd nerf them. And yes, we stretch this into a 20 minute video somehow. So feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree, or maybe you agree but you think the changes should be something else, which is also rather interesting. How would you change these gods? without changing the kit extensively. Again, we want to keep the idea of the kit the same, the core of the character, you know, what makes them unique, what makes them them? That's what High Res likes to do. So guys, also enjoy this, thanks for watching, and as always, 
See you all next time.